Szanowni Państwo, o godzinie 14.30 rozpocznie się bardzo ważny konkurs Cross kwalifikacji olimpijskiej grupy C na prowadzeniu po ujeżdżeniu zespół Polski. Dziś może zrobić duży krok w kierunku Paryża. Pierwszy koń wystartuje o godzinie 14.30 cztery długie gwiazdki. A w międzyczasie zapraszamy do specjalnej strefy dla dzieci, w której dziś i jutro odbywają się gry i zabawy organizowane między innymi przez Szamoturski Ośrodek Kultury. Dzisiaj do godziny 16 o pełnych godzinach zapraszamy do namiotu Szamoturskiego Ośrodka Kultury na krótkie koncerty w wykonaniu Roberta Barte z Francji. Z kolei Piotr Witoń w namiocie szoku będzie czytał książki dla dzieci. Animatorki zadbają także o inne atrakcje dla najmłodszych, w tym bańki mydlane, gry i zabawy animacyjne nawiązujące do tematyki jeździeckiej, w tym wyścigi na chłopy horsach. Serdecznie zapraszamy. Zapraszamy też do licznych stoisk ze sprzętem i akcesoriami jeździeckimi oraz do strefy gastronomicznej. Podaję warunki krosu, długich czterech gwiazdek w ramach CC i o kwalifikacji grupy C do Igrzysk Olimpijskich w Paryżu. 30 przeszkód, dystans to aż 5 km i 700 m, tempo 570 m na minutę, stąd norma czasu wynosi równe 10 minut. Na liście startowej 11 par. Dwie drużyny praktycznie walczą o to jedno miejsce z grupy C, bowiem zespół czeski został zdekompletowany, a więc Polska kontra Węgry, a jeszcze też na tej liście są pary, które w tym konkursie walczą indywidualnie, bo takie prawo mają i przy okazji zdobywają punkty do indywidualnego rankingu olimpijskiego, który przeznaczony jest dla państw, które nie zdobędą kwalifikacji drużynowej. Well, a very, very warm welcome at TFI.tv for what is it going to be an absolutely superb afternoon of sport. We have got lots of cross-country action in store for you. The first horse due out on course in just a couple of minutes' time. They'll be down there in the warm-up making their final preparations. But what have we got in store to look forward to? Well, we kick off with the four-star long, the designated Olympic qualifier for Group C. And uh, we have got some 11 combinations in the lineup coming forward to uh, take on Marcin Konowski's uh, cross-country course, which has been set 5,700 meters, the total distance and the optimum time of 10 minutes exactly. Incredible scenes here, such a busy competition schedule in Babarithko, a key eventing competition on the calendar. And we are very much treated to some fantastic competition. Not only are we looking to secure a ticket to uh, the Paris 2024 Olympic Games for one team here this weekend, but huge Olympic ranking points on offer for other potential individual allocations. So uh, how does the leaderboard shape up overnight? Well, it is Poland in control of the team at competition last to go in the dressage. He'll be last to go cross country in this section as well. Pavel Woszkowski and Lucinda X. Annie lead the way. The only sub 30 score, 29.7. Ahead of teammate Jan Kaminski and Yard, 31.4, currently sitting in second. Matthijs Kiemper and Libertina, 32.0. Libertina really caught my eye in the first phase yesterday. Uh, she currently sits in third. And uh, rounding out uh, four Polish flags in the top four placings, Victoria Knapp and Quintus, 134, 33.5. So uh, the first of our Hungarian riders comes in and 
fifth Imre Toth and so Pressy 8 34.2 Imre will be the pathfinder for the Hungarian team uh, in a couple of horses time and then we've got Noemi Durfer Balatz Keisinger in sixth and seventh as well just the three riders coming forward for the Hungarian team which means that they need to count all of their scores here today so that is really really important for them and uh, we have no doubt that the cross country will certainly play its part on the leaderboard as well. So who will be our pathfinder? Well, it will be Malgorzata Koritska, scored 35.6 uh, yesterday. Marcin has done a really good job with this cross country track in uh, making sure that the full distance can obviously be accounted for. The four-star long level of competition significantly longer than uh, the four-star short level of competition that we are familiar with seeing Nations Cup competitions run at. Malkajarata and uh, Horse on whom she rode at the uh, World Championships in Protoni last year, already out on course and making light work of the early part of the track, clear through fence seven as we catch up with them, coming back past the start box, heading towards the two minute marker at fence number eight. The angled hedge combination at eight A and B which is where we'll catch up with them. Looks on the three strides. One, two, three. Gets the three strides as well. You can just see how wide those two fences are. Quickly back past the uh, cross-country collecting ring where riders are making their final preparations. I'm sure we'll be keeping one eye on her round across the country as well. So away from the angled hedge combination. And this is a real opportunity to possibly catch up on a bit of time because just the two jumping efforts in this minute of the track. 9A and B, really big narrow picnic table. Curving left-handed line, the four strides comes up really easily. And she certainly set out with plenty of attack round this cross-country course. Pathfinder always holds such an important role because uh, the feedback gets back really quickly, but also in terms of the Polish team as well. A clear round on the board from their first combination will fill the rest of the team with huge confidence, will bring back valuable feedback to the team. So they're clear of the Mimoxa onto the Trikana at 11, just past the four minute marker this stage of the course. Sits up and takes that pretty well in her stride. And you can just see actually, and Valencia still looking pretty keen. Has taken quite a strong hold early on. And doing a really good job. They know each other really well, this combination. Up next, we will welcome uh, the Czech rider Miroslav Tronda competing individually. So the first of the waters gets that skinny at the exit really easily. They almost try land on dry land in over that first element there. The Stadnino Kanoe boat. And then comes the next of the waters. And there's a real question. 15, A, B, and 16. Just taking her time to set up because the ground can get a little bit slippy here. So they've angled the boat at the fence that precedes the water the Kanoe boat. Almost a little bit of a speed bump set by Marcin Konofsky before they turn back here 
to the Stad Nina Kanoa Water Complex. 15 A and B, and it's not most a, a whole turn back on themselves. The log drop in, curving left handed to these angled hedges. They're actually separately numbered, but they're very much on the related distance and jump through there really, really easily. This is looking a very, very good round from our Pathfinders. The table at 17 behind them, and uh, there's a lot of jumping efforts in this six, seventh minute of the track. They're just past the six minute marker. The Lotto wine barrel combination 18 A and B, and 19 A and B as well. Just can't, don't want to take any chances this far into the course. Big corner, curving right-handed line to the angled brush and pops through there really nicely. Very easily done. So, with the cheers of the Polish crowd, driving her towards home, this is a really, really exciting round for our Pathfinders. Clear of the big box, or the roll top, I should say. Then on to the Stadnina Kanoo combination. Twenty-one A and B. She's been out on course for about seven and a half minutes. I would say the time is looking okay. By my watch, but Ooh, she did well to keep the horse's shoulders in there, showing their experience actually. And the mare really looked for the flags, kept true to her line, and she is motoring on towards home. On a uh, individual score of 35.6, obviously the individual competition matters enormously, but also. For the Polish team, it is really, really important to clear round from their pathfinder would set them up really well for the rest of the competition. So we're going on now to the question on the hill. She swings right-handed. You can see these really clever little mounds. And that second element is so skinny. But they make it look very straightforward. So our pathfinder, Malka Sharata, Kuritska, and Can Valencia, this 12 year old mare who've competed at uh, championship level, will be uh, feeding lots and lots of confidence back to the Polish team as things stand at the moment. But they've still got a good minute and a little bit before the finish flags. Really nicely clear of the hedge at 25. And now's the nine minute marker. So possibly just a little bit down on the clock. We'll come back to her in a second as we join Miroslav Tranda and Trunkarov down at the river crossing. Pops through there really nicely. And uh, we understand actually having picked up 20 penalties at 9B on the live scores that's showing at the second element, uh, the second of those picnic tables, there was a really big angle there. And so carrying those 20 penalties. As very nearly home. Malgozrata Kritska. It's the last real question. Just gets that uh, small third stride in. And then she's just got to jump the last and safely through the finish. You can see just how much that means, how much it means to the Polish team as well, because their first team rider is home with a clear on the board, provisionally 6.4 time penalties. And that is a seriously good performance for them. 42.0, their score going forwards. 
taking the slightly higher part of the second of those angled hedges up at 16. That's absolutely fine. As Miroslav waiting for the Czech Republic. Ooh, slightly hairy moments at the first of those angled brushes. We'll let, let the judges give us the information as to whether that was clear or whether they would be awarded 15 penalties for a potential missed flag. Uh, we'll keep an eye on those live scores as here is the first of the Hungarian team riders. This is a really, really important round. It is in Rayton, so Pressy 8, this 16 year old man, on a score of 34.2. Don't forget Hungary bidding to have a team at the Olympic Games for the first time since Atlanta back in 1996. They've only got the three riders here. So. It's really important to have good, clear cross-country rounds on the board for them. Miroslav Trunda, Trunka, RF. Really nicely done through that. Big Pats. Looking for the next question. And there's a, a few of these, you know, you would describe them as let up fences. They're still dimensionally very large, but the technicality is significantly less than some of the intense combinations out there on course. And that's just a, a real opportunity for horse and rider to just catch their breath for a second. As Miroslav comes to the question on the hill, 23. A, B, just past the eight minute marker. Imre Toth, meanwhile, in the first half of the course with Zypressi eight, clear so far, the first of the Hungarian team riders. Just the one combination home, remember, that is Malgarita, Karitska, Can Valencia, clear with 6.4 time. comes up to the water. He clears that boat really nicely. At 14 into the second half of the course. Now he's just past the halfway marker. And the Stadnina Knoe water complex 15 A, B and 16. So 15 A, B is the login. He's taken a really good positive turn there. He needs to make sure he can get his line. Over the first, yeah, really nicely over the second as well. Because the first of those hedges is related to the, the log coming in. That's 15 A and B. The second of the hedges is actually separately numbered at 16. And Imrate doing a really, really good job here. Pathfinder for the Hungarian team with Zypressi 8. Jan Kaminski and Yard, the second of the Polish team combinations out on course there. Clear through fence seven. So coming back at the two minute marker. Long galloping run. Just the two jumping efforts between minute two and three. Which at the four star long level of competition really just allows a horse and rider to open up on that accelerator. Takes a really inside line there. Great shots of just how tight that uh, line was for them. As uh, Miroslav Trunda just in the main arena holds for the three strides and just has the last to go. Carrying 20 penalties, but uh, otherwise a very good round and safely through the finish. They'll be uh, just over a minute over the time as well. But they are home. Jan Kaminski. Jard, oh, just got in a little bit tight to the second element there. Picture of concentration. Grzanta Kalitska, the pathfinder for the Polish team, is home safely. And just checking on the live scores, Miroslav Trunda was 
awarded 15 penalties for a missed flag at 19A, which we did wonder if he might be. That uh, could well be reviewed by the ground jury. But for now, 20 jumping and 15 for a missed flag gives them 35 jumping penalties to add from their cross-country route. So two combinations out on course at the moment. Jan Kaminski is uh, just coming on to the middle section of his round. At the first of the waters, the river complex at 12. The first of three opportunities for horses to get their feet wet. Marcin Konaski. The cross-country course designer here. See that curving left-handed line takes such a forward distance through there. And this looks to be a really quick round from what we've seen so far. The first of the Hungarian team riders, Imre Tost Cypressi 8, still clear on the scoreboard as they come towards the latter part of their round. About eight jumping efforts remaining. About 40 seconds to get home. So possibly a little bit down on the clock, but it's clear jumping, which is the important thing. Jan Kaminski and Yard absolutely motoring through the Stadnina Kanoe boat. Quickly turns back to the next of the waters to these angled brushes and pops through there like it was a schooling exercise. Hugely enthusiastic cheers from the crowd. They know that they are seeing something really special. This combination looking very, very confident. So, uh, Jan Kaminski and Yard out on course, away from the top end of the track, the Stadnina Kanoa water complex behind them. He's taking his time to set the horse up for this corner combination. And just needs to be careful not to run into trouble here because looking a little bit wild at that first element, the flag has gone. He's very quickly away. That was where Miroslav Tranda actually picked up 15 penalties for being classed as missing a flag. And Jan Kaminski actually has had uh, 20 penalties go on the, or 15 penalties, I should say, go on the board for him. So we'll wait for that to be confirmed. But uh, he is still well on his way. Hugely exciting start to the competition here. As away goes this Peter Markev and uh, Gascon. Peter riding for uh, Bulgaria. Comes forward on a score of 42.8. Horse just had to be a little bit careful there at the uh, Oxa. At 10 on the... Uh, deformable fence uh, MIM clips and a reminder that if those were to be activated in the competition under FEI rules 11 penalties automatically added so the first of the Hungarian riders is home Imre Tosai Pressi 8 at home safely 8 time penalties to add brilliant performance from them Yard. Well done through the uh, combination on the hill. We'll keep you updated on news of uh, a potential missed flag at 19A 
as it comes through to us. Nothing confirmed as yet. As here is Peter Markev. The first of the waters. Oh, very bold jump in, and that just makes the turn a little bit tricky. The horse has to be quite cat-like in his agility. And Peter does a really good job in just giving the horse a pat down the neck and saying, well done, because you need a horse to help you out cross-country sometimes. And that is exactly what this horse did. So, uh, of those horses home safely, let's just take a look at the uh, scoreboard. It is Can Valencia and Malgajatha Kalitska who uh, have a score of 42.0 that are the head of proceedings on the live scores. First of the Hungarian team riders, Imre Totsai Pressi 8, also home safely. Jan Kaminski, meanwhile, setting sail for home. He's got around 20 seconds on the clock. 10 minutes, the optimum time, and just rather ran his luck at the brush, the steeplechase hedge at 28. He won't want to be taking any of those chances here in the main arena. Here's still one big question. The cottage houses 29A and B. And uh, got through both of those. And so just the last to go. Possibly going to pick up a couple of seconds over the time, but he won't be a million miles away. The second of the Polish team riders is home safely. They've got two clear rounds on the board. Jan Kaminski and Yard, absolutely phenomenal. 1.2 time penalties. He punches the air, and you can see just what this means. As taking an alternative route to Peter Markev and a Gascon for Bulgaria. Still being judged as having jumped clear to this stage from what we've seen. As Jan Kaminski and Yard home safely 1.2 time. So that is going to see them as the ones to beat at the moment. They were on a score of 31.4. We'll come back to that in a second. As Gascon really nicely through the water up at the top of the hill. Now makes that run back down towards the eight minute marker. Noemi Durfa now away with uh, Crystal Barney. Noemi, who has been based actually in the UK with Austin and Amy O'Connor for the last couple of years, now based out in Europe with the former world champion in Sandra Orfuth. Number 306 on the back is Peter Markev and uh, Gascon. Really well done through the uh, Stadnina Kanoo combination. Competed at uh, the World Championships for Young Horses at Lelion Dungeon in 2021. They took only 24th position. And they beat 11th place. So, uh, heading on towards home. home. If you are just tuning in, then a very, very warm welcome to you. We are in the thick of the cross country here on FEI.tv for the four star long format here in Babarithko for the Olympic qualifier for Group C, that is Central and Eastern Europe. Two teams in with a reckoning is just very boldly through the combination on the hill, Peter Markev and Gascon, as Noemi Derfa comes to the river crossing. And this is the youngest uh, horse in the field, just a nine-year-old, so uh, relatively inexperienced Crystal Barney up to the four-star long level for the first time. Jan Kaminski and Yard picking up 1.2 time penalties are the ones to beat. They were on a score of 31.4, so 32.6 is the score that they take forward. Gas 
school. Looking like a real partnership with Peter Markov as they uh, head on towards the latter stages of their round. Noemi Durfer, meanwhile, pops really nicely clear of the uh, boat in the second of those waters. And there's a real angle on that. How much you get straight to it just uh, really affects your line to the next water. As uh, three jumping efforts remaining for uh, Peter Markev and Gascon. Holding for the three strides between those angled brushes and just the last to go. They'll pick up a few time penalties, but it's been a good round from this combination. And uh, it is a clear jumping round as well. So 5.6 time penalties for them. Oh, Noemi Daffa. Oh, heartbreak, heartbreak. Out on course uh, for Noemi Daffa and for the Hungarian team because they were only uh, fielding three riders. She went for the two strides and it wasn't quite there for her. The horse chipped in a little one. She was so close to holding on, but gravity just taking over. And that is really, really disappointing for them. That will end their day. The horse uh, looked none the worse for wear for that tumble. And Noemi landed almost on her feet. So uh, they'll be back to uh, compete another day, I'm sure. But it does mean that the Hungarian team will have to count a 1,000 penalties for their non-completion in terms of their team score. As away goes Victoria Knapp. And uh, Quintus 134, this 12-year-old uh, chestnut gelding. Clear of the first five. They are the third of the Polish team riders. So if Victoria is at home clear and pretty close to the time, they will have their first three team riders all with clear cross-country rounds on the board because they've already got two clears in the bank. They came courtesy of Malka Tarata Kritska and Jan Kaminski. Jan actually the one to beat at the top of the leaderboard, 32.6 in terms of the individual standings. But there's so much at stake here because don't forget a ticket to the Paris uh, Olympic Games being held next summer on offer to one team and it is Poland in the driving seat as things stand. Victoria and uh, Quintus coming to the river crossing. The first of the three waters out on course 12A and B. Just land on dry land, actually. Splash through the water, and then she picks up that skinny element really nicely. So just approaching the five-minute marker here. Martin Kronowski, the cross-country course designer here in uh, Babarithko. And they do an incredible job, the team here, in organising lots of dim different competitions. And they're rewarded with a really, really classy entry field as well. You can just see that's a great shot, actually, of how angled that boat is. And Victoria looked like she just actually straightened up for it slightly. Didn't get the jump she would have perhaps wanted. But puts it behind her. And... Uh, now needs to come round for this final water. This is a much bigger question. Careful jump in, then she needs to get her line for these two angled brushes over the first. Gets the one stride between them and very quickly on her way. So uh, halfway through this track, the third of our Polish team riders still clear on the board at the moment. Clubhouse leader Jan Kaminski and Yard on a score of 32.6 ahead of Malka Zorita Kalitska Can Valencia 42.0 Imre Totsai Pressi 842.2 in third but uh, the first of the Hungarian team riders or the second of the Hungarian team riders I should say unfortunately not completing and pops very nicely through 19 A and B 
as clean as any that we've seen through there, actually. It's certainly been a combination that's caught people out. Victoria Knappen, Quint also very clear of the Lotto Wanderers combination. Um, next rider is an individual from the Czech Republic. So, uh, Still a young rider, Victoria Knapp and uh, Quintus clear so far as they go uh, away from 20. That is the uh, roll top. And then a real opportunity to open up on that accelerator here. 5,700 meters, the total distance. And pops very neatly through that corner combination as well. He's been very clever, Marcin Konofsky, in using lots of little mounds that have been built around this track because the terrain on the whole is generally pretty level. just passing in the other direction. It is uh, Mathieu, Souk de Lac and a Quaid for the Czech Republic. Matty clear of the uh, first 10 fences out on course. So he's just over four minutes into his round here. Combination who uh, finished top 25 at Hartbury at the Young Rider European Championships last year as uh, just looping back into the final parts of her round after cross all the way across the arena on her way to uh, one of the last combinations on course Quintus and uh, Victoria Knapp picture of concentration Pretty warm Quintus out there. The sun's certainly shining. Quick check of the watch. She's got just under a minute to get home. So she's about where she would need to be, possibly a few seconds down on the clock. But she can afford a few time penalties in terms of the team competition. The most important thing is she gets a clear jumping round. This round has really improved as they've gone on, actually. Quintus has really settled to the task at hand. And they come on to the steeplechase hedge at 28. Pops that very nicely. They came forward to the cross country on a score of 33.5. So individually, this puts them in a great uh, position as well if they're clear and pretty close to the time. She's going to be very, very tight to that clock. And possibly just sneaking a couple of seconds over, but not a million miles away. And the Polish team have got three of their riders home without jumping penalties. This is going to see them in a really, really strong position going into tomorrow's show jumping round. And Victoria Knapp becomes the first to stop the clock inside the time. One second inside that optimum of 10 minutes. Absolutely sensational from uh, the very young, talented Polish rider. Victoria Knapp goes forward to the, cross, uh, to the show jumping tomorrow on a score of 33.5. Now, though, we turn our attentions to Matei Sukdalak and uh, Quaid accommodation in their first run at the uh, four-star long level of competition. For the uh, Czech Republic, who are so disappointed not to field a full team here themselves. And really nicely done through that combination. But due to a late withdrawal, they only had the two members competing. And you need a minimum of three to field the team. As, uh, next away from the start, it is uh, Matiusz Kiempa and Libertina. And it's a horse that really caught my eye in the first phase yesterday. 14 years of age, this bay mare. 
And uh, Matiusz has been uh, such a stalwart for the Polish team over the years. And Libertina looking really confident over the first 10 fences. A Wilbury wonder pony strapped uh, to Matiusz's uh, back as well. Matiusz who uh, missed at the World Championships in Protoni last year, having picked up an injury so disappointing for him. That was perhaps a surprising omission from the Polish team this week. He's actually competing as uh, an individual. But uh, still plenty to play for as he goes on to the river crossing at 12A and B. Pops through there very nicely. Absolutely no trouble at any of those jumping efforts. So if you're just tuning in, then a very, very warm welcome to you. We've had uh, plenty of drama here in the four-star long format cross country for the Olympic group qualifier for Group C. Two teams going head-to-head -head for a ticket to Paris in 2024. They will, of course, still have to show jump tomorrow where we will be bringing you the conclusion of the competition on FEI.tv. But it is Poland in the driving seat. Their first three team riders home safely clear cross country. And unfortunately, Hungary had a, a rider fall out on the cross country so they have to count a thousand penalties which uh, will prove very expensive to their overall team score Tush Kiampa meanwhile and Libertina coming to the water right at the top of the, the course and has plenty of time there to make the turn enthusiastic cheers from the crowd as uh, they continue on their way away from the uh, six minute marker. Not a million uh, seconds away from where he'd need to be actually to be on the clock. 10 minutes, the optimum time. And uh, they go on to one of the most influential combinations on the course, the Lotto wine barrels, 19 A and B. that corner then on the curving right-handed line to these angled brushes on the two strides pops through there very very nicely Mathieu uh, Soukdelac and uh, Quaid they are home safely look to be clear jumping 16.8 time brilliant for the young uh, rider from the Czech Republic that's Matiusz Kiempa into the final third of his round. So uh, they make that psychological turn back up towards uh, the main arena. It's a really twisty track. Marcin Konaski has got plenty of opportunities for these four-star long competitors to open up on the accelerator. But there's an awful lot packed into uh, a relatively small area as Matiusz and Libertina Looking as full of running as any that we've seen, actually, at this stage of the course. Only one has made the time. Remember, that was Victoria Knapp and Quintus, who currently sit second on the leaderboard. Jan Kaminski and Yard out in front. And actually, only one person can go ahead of Jan going into tomorrow's uh, final show jumping. And that will be his teammate, who will be last out on course, Pavel Vorskovsky. And Lucinda X and Ni. 
Libertina, though. Goes on to the uh, Rupa Janelle Lowry combination 26 27. Just perhaps looking a little bit more weary now. Just over a minute left on the clock. Well, that's uh, Kaisinger, Clover 15, also out on course, clear through fence 10. The final uh, combination from Hungary. It's Matthews just uh, keeping Libertina up to the task in hand. And that looks like the last combination left to come out on course. Uh, that's Balas Kaisinger, actually, who has retired out on course. Beg your pardon, Clover 15. Not getting any information through just yet on the live scores as to where they have elected to call it a day. But uh, unfortunately, that really does take the Hungarian team out of the reckoning in terms of uh, securing that team qualification spot for Paris. Really, really unfortunate for them. Uh, Matthews Kiempa just three jumping efforts remaining with Libertina the time penalties are going to be clocking up here so it isn't going to challenge the leader but still a very very good round from them and uh, big pants for Libertina as uh, Matthews comes home safely eight time penalties 20 seconds over the optimum time and that sees them go into third. So still a podium position, a score of 40.0 on the board for them. So uh, Jan Kaminski and Yard, the ones who lead the way, 32.6, only one combination left to go. They're out on course, Pavel Voskovsky and Lucinda X. Ani. And uh, they could go ahead of Jan Kaminski and Yard. Let's take a look at how much time they have got in hand. Because uh, Jan Kaminsky on a score of 32.6. And Pavel Vorshkovsky went out uh, on a score of 29.7. So 2.9 penalties is the difference. So could afford to be seven seconds over the optimum time to be our overnight leader going forward to tomorrow's uh, show jumping. And a set out like he means business. As one might expect very quickly through an early combination at 8A and B. The final rider in the Polish team, the anchor rider, and actually the anchor rider with the luxury of knowing that his three teammates have all posted three good, clear, fast cross-country rounds. A fourth would only strengthen their hand going into tomorrow's show jumping, but things would have to go pretty disastrously wrong for the Polish team here to uh, miss out on that team qualification spot as things stand. So, uh, Pavel Vorskowski who is coached by the Polish team coach, actually, Andreas Dubowski. This 15-year-old mare at the uh, river crossing, that left-handed turn to that skinny at the B element, pops over it very nicely. By uh, Limbus, this mare. Steiner bread. And a combination who actually came here off the back of winning their final preparation run. The four star short in Sopot uh, had a convincing win there. So experienced at the four star level. Placings at the four star long level of competition as well. Was sixth in Montalabretti a couple of years ago.
level who represented Poland at a home European Championships in Stregom back in 2017, but has also, having come up through the junior young rider ranks, went to the Le Moulin Europeans in 2011 as well. A wealth of experience. That is exactly what you want in this sort of pressure situation. Big uh, claps from the crowd. A hugely enthusiastic crowd here in Babarithko, actually. Getting really behind all of the combinations out on course. As, uh, they head into the second half of their round. Remember, can be seven seconds over the time if they've jumped clear to go ahead of Jan Kaminsky. And Yard, who uh, it should also be noted had uh, there was a question mark over a potential 15 penalties for a flag that has uh, not been awarded as things stand so he is definitely the one to beat at the moment and it was at this fence first element of it another to knock the flag but goes through on the two strides just looking possibly a little bit more tired. They're seven minutes into the track here. I'd say down on the clock, which would be really, really interesting because there's still plenty to jump out there. Ten minutes exactly the optimum time set for Martin Konowski's track. 5,700 metres, the total distance. He is still pricked. The horse still galloping, looking for the next fence. And this uh, have little rails on top of the mound, curving left-handed line to the brush corner. Comes through that very, very nicely. So, uh, Pavel Borshkovsky, Lucinda X, Annie, well on their way home. About 90 seconds from the finish flags. Still got a good bit of jumping to do, but it's been a superb clear round so far for them. Remember, the Polish team, three clear rounds from their three team riders so far, so very firmly in the driving seat. Two of the Hungarian riders not completing the cross country phase, so it is looking like Poland will be en route to Paris in 2024. That'll all be confirmed tomorrow, though, because we will be bringing the final show jumping phase for you live on FEI.TV. We do hope that you will join us for the conclusion of a really, really exciting competition. As uh, Pavel Vorskovsky, Lucinda X, Annie, just coming to the uh, steeplechase hedge. 28 in just a moment. Still got a, a little bit of jumping to do out there, actually. Can be seven seconds over the time and still go ahead of Jan Kaminsky and Jard, but actually... I'd say uh, possibly looking a little bit further down on the clock than they would have liked. They've got to uh, come into the main arena in just a second. And still, those jumping efforts left for them at this uh, second to last combination, which has jumped really well today, but just really does deserve respect. You'd be uh, so frustrated to have a late 20 penalties. So already over the time here, those time penalties will start to clock up pretty quickly. 0.4 of a penalty for every second over the optimum. Came forward on 29.7 as our dressage leader. Jan Kaminsky, 32.6 and Yard, the ones to beat at the moment. But Pavel Vorskovsky 
is just uh, one fence away from making it four cross-country clear rounds from the four Polish team riders here. Quite the show of dominance. And it is clear round number four on the board for the Polish team. They will be absolutely delighted with that performance, and so they should be, because uh, ticking the box in every way they needed to. Strength and depth, and also, really importantly, a four-star long minimum eligibility requirement uh, qualifying result here ticks a box for each of their individual combinations of bidding for a team place next year as well. So 16.4 time penalties for uh, Pavel Forskovsky and Lucinda X Annie, which will drop them a little bit down the leadboard. 46.1, they drop down into sixth. But what a cross-country session we have just enjoyed. Jan Kaminski and Yard lead the Polish combinations out in front. 32.6, the ones to beat going into tomorrow's so show jumping. 33.5 in second to Quintus134 and Victoria Knapp. Actually, the only combination to go inside the optimum time cross country. Mateusz Kiempa and Libertina sit in third. Uh, Malgorzata Kuritska, Can Valencia, Pathfinders round the cross country in fourth. The only of the Hungarian combinations to complete Imre Toth in fifth, Cypressi eight. And Pavel Forskovsky, Lucinda X Ani completing the top six, 46.1 on the leaderboard. But uh, obviously, the competition will conclude tomorrow with the show jumping phase. All eyes will be on Poland because they need to uh, get the job done. They need to get those uh, show jumping rounds completed tomorrow, but they've done everything that they needed to do today. Four clear rounds, and it is Jan Kaminski and Yard in the driving seat as things stand at the moment. So we have got uh, a few minutes break. And then we will be turning our attentions to the uh, remainder of the four-star cross-country for the long format competition, which will be on uh, clipmyhorse.tv. But we do hope that you will join us tomorrow for the exciting conclusion to this uh, Olympic Group C qualifying competition here in Babarithko. And we'll be back very shortly with more cross-country action for you. <laughs>